This is my fourth restart of a video that I wasn't going to make today. Um, I wasn't going to make it because Sassafras got me up a lot during the night and, uh, and I am particularly tired and I want to come to you with a certain kind of energy and I was thinking, no, you know, do it tomorrow. Get some sleep tonight and do it tomorrow. And then I saw the news headlines and I thought quite a bit about what my response to those headlines is. Um, and I decided that my response is love. My response is uh, that we are going to continue doing what we love best, what we are here on the planet to do. And in my case, I am here to write books. Uh, and I want you to write your books as well. And so my, my answer to hatred is today going to be love. Okay, so how to make your novel unputdownable. People will tell you that you need to start with the character. Absolutely right. You must start with your main protagonist. So you've got your main protagonist and you know a bunch about them. Maybe you've got a checklist that you have written up that tells you a bunch. Maybe you um, know their anagram number. Maybe you know their star sign. Maybe you know a bunch about how they grew up. And maybe you know their misbelief. Now, in my world, you must know their misbelief because in my version of the modern novel, the point of the novel is to see how that person tackles whatever it is they have to tackle in the novel, the plot. So they're tackling the plot. Um, and that is putting pressure on the story, which is why it matters to the main protagonist. And each time the plot attacks the story, your main protagonist changes until right at the end where they have actually become somebody different. So you have to know their misbelief, right? If you have to know their misbelief, you have to know the antagonist's misbelief, right? Because they are mirroring or parallel things. And we'll do a complete um, session on what that means. I was going to do a talk in Vegas about the antagonist. Um, and I will, I will actually get a couple of my writing buddies to come on and talk to me about their antagonist so you can see how that works. So you've got your main protagonist. You've got your antagonist. You understand both of their misbeliefs. And... Now you're thinking about the inciting incident, and the exciting, inciting incident is not the boom that happens, but the moment when something happens, something plot happens, that hits your main protagonist in their misbelief and forces them to do something. If it doesn't force them to do something that is outside their ordinary remit, then that's not the inciting incident. Then you're still looking for your inciting incident. So you're thinking about that, and you're thinking about that. I'm going to offer you something quite different because I don't think that they are the first questions that you need to ask. What you need to ask is, what do I want my readers to feel? Because the novel is all about emotional intelligence and we're going to get really deep into this stuff. You need to know what you want your readers to feel before you start if you don't know what you want them to feel, you're not going to pick the right misbelief and you're not going to pick the right antagonist misbelief and you're going to get the stakes slightly wrong. And you can have a book that works and sells with, with those things not being um, transparent to you, but you've got a much, much better chance of it doing well if you ask that primary question, what do I want my reader, not my character, my reader to feel? And in every genre, you have got dominant feelings. It doesn't matter whether it's plot driven or story driven. There is a dominant feeling that goes with that genre. And I want you to think, I'm just checking the time to make sure we're doing okay. We're doing okay for time. I want you to think about what the dominant feeling is. I've pulled some books um, out. So um, I tried to make them quite big books so that a lot of people... Um, so what would you say the dominant feeling in this book is. Terrific, terrific book. If you haven't read it, you absolutely should. So let's have another look. Oh my goodness, I think I gobbled this down in like two sittings. Tell me what the dominant feeling is that underlies this book. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so um, 
this is this is an anthology that I put out in order to, to raise money for my uh, sister-in-law's mother who was losing her house and it's actually going to court next week we hope we hope um, and I wrote a story in this that I am very proud of and um, it didn't sell as well as Hellcat sold because um, I was quite ill by the time this book came out uh, but it is a story that I want everyone to read everyone who has read it has said that they cried and that was exactly what I wanted. I wanted to hit them right in the fields. And that's what you want. You want to hit your reader where they live. Grimdark, right? What is the feeling that it evokes? That's, it's quite hard to talk about Grimdark because um, you've got morally questionable main protagonists, but there are big feelings that go along with this. Oh goodness, isn't this absolutely a terrific book? What is the underlying feeling? There is a dominant feeling underneath the book that pulls everything together and is what you are aiming for. And it's a touchstone. Sorry, I keep forgetting to look at the camera. It's the touchstone that you will go back to when you are thinking about your novel. So um, to today's rock is uh, you can't see in this light because it's pretty dark now but it's got a kind of greenish hue I think it looks like a shark's tooth um, lots and lots of magic in this rock um, I will be sending rocks magic writing rocks out next week to people um, I apologize for the packaging they will come in a little baggie that is to keep them safe um, but so that they don't get crushed in the postal system I also put them inside um, a cleaned out, of course, a uh, pill bottle. So I hope that they come to you. My question for you is, if you want a chance to win a magic writing rock, is what is the dominant feeling that you are trying to get your readers to feel? I need to know what your genre is, and I need to know what that dominant feeling is. And then we're going to start unpacking that and talking about how you go about making your readers feel. Remember, people don't remember what you said, but they do remember how you made them feel. Feeling is how memory goes into long-term memory. So th there are lots and lots of theories about why we remember the songs from high school and we don't remember you know, what we did at work yesterday. And there are theories around music, but I would offer that it's because they made you feel something. And anything, any piece of art that makes you feel something goes into a different part of the brain and is coded differently. So if you want your novel to be unforgettable and unputdownable, you need to work out before you start what you want your readers to feel. And then you might even, depending on whether or not you're a potter, a planter, or a pantser, you might even have a map, some kind of brain map, um, to, to look at what the emotional trajectory is of your story, because you're not going to hit the same feeling every time, right? You can have a dominant feeling, but you're going to be building like a piece of music. You are going to be building towards this crescendo. Now I wish I'd pulled um, The Art of Racing in the Rain off the shelf, because good lord if that didn't pack a punch. Um, all right, what is your genre and what is the dominant feeling? Or the other question that you can answer is, of these books, what is the dominant feeling that the writer was going for? I will see you again tomorrow with more, hopefully with a bit more brain and a bit more energy. All right, write lots. Bye.